Next question is from NAD7719. Is it true Nads. that the calf muscle is mostly determined by genetics and is not as trainable as other muscles in terms of increasing size? <laughs> Half that's true. You know what's funny about that one? So I, I think about this sometimes with calves, and I'm going to be very honest, okay? Because I talk about, oh, my calves don't respond like the rest of my body. Here's the truth. Of all the body parts that I've trained in myself, I've trained my calves the least, straight up, 100%. I'm the most consistent with other body parts of my body and my calves. I've always, if I've neglected anything, it's my, and I believe this to be true for most people or more, especially most men who work out in the gym. So it's hard to say. Now there's the argument for genetics because we walk around a lot. So the calves are used to at least doing something. So they may require more volume and work. Maybe they're, they're comprised of more slow twitch muscle fibers <clears throat> for stamina and endurance. I've definitely known people to have big calves and I've known other people who train their calves like crazy and, and get little development. Um, but it's hard to say because I don't know very many people that train their calves as consistently as they train their biceps. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's usually not the muscle you start training when you start working out. Yeah, but so here's where I agree with you. Uh, it's it's neglected as many, and, and it's a muscle. It can be developed. So and uh, and I when I was getting into competing, like the I never put the the effort towards training my calves like I did then, and I mm. a lot. I put obviously I'm on stage in my shorts, even though they don't they don't. Uh, uh, um, judge a lot of your calves, they, they still see them. So if they, if you're up there and you have this impressive upper body and you have no calves whatsoever, you'll get dock points. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just, you, if that, if it comes down to that, that will make the difference, right? Me and another guy who look exactly the same at top, but then I have no calves, I'm going to get docked. So it was 100% of focus for me and it was already a weak point going in. So uh, I trained calves like I'd never trained any other muscle. It, it began, it became a, a muscle that I started most all workouts with. It had its own dedicated day, mm -hmm. and I did was doing blood occlusion. Like the amount of volume that I scaled up was insane. I I scaled up the volume on my calves more than anything I ever done, and I got results. Like my calves, I get to a point where I mean I, I've joked on the show if you've listened long enough. You know, the, the day I got compliments, started getting compliments on it, it was like <laughs> such a big deal for me, right? Like, oh my God, somebody started noticed, crying. right? But here's the thing. Here's <laughs> why this feels true for a lot of people. And this is where I understand. Because genetics do play a huge role, okay? So like if it's in, you know, where the origin insertion, if you have these short little muscle bellies and these really high calves, like a lot of basketball players, um, it's not going to look as big as like someone like Justin who has a longer or well, in terms of the look. Yeah. Right. So it's not going to look the same, just like a butt, like some, some girls naturally and guys have a natural bubble butt and they don't do anything. They just have this nice little bubble. Butt. Other people have like a, a flat butt, which is this long origin insertion. Mm. And, but both those butts can be developed. Okay, the reason why I think the calves feel this way, because unlike the butt, which is a massive muscle, the calf is such a small muscle. Mm -hmm. It's one of the, it's like forearms, where you could sit here and talk all day about putting all this attention in your forearms, and you can develop them, but they're never going to feel impressive like a chest or a back or quads. They're just a small muscle. So I think part of it is true what you're saying that most people, it's because they we just like the attention. That 100% was me as a teenage boy. You know, we we did it for basketball a little bit. I did them occasionally, but I neglected them more than anything else. As an adult, I definitely put a lot of energy and effort to them, saw results from it, but still were never really that impressive. And I think a lot of that has to do with they're a much smaller muscle. Yeah, yeah I definitely think yeah, genetics are part of it. Also, though, like, you, you know, expressing that, though, is really important. Like, for me... So think it's not like I didn't put any effort there. Like there was a lot of frequency. There's a lot of jumping. There's a lot of jump rope. There was a lot of like driving the sled. There was a lot of positions, you know, being a linebacker where you can't you can't put your heels on the ground ever. I was trained to do that. And I was also trained to to do front squats and stuff with my heels raised because back then it, you know, it applied towards the sport. But uh there was a lot of of frequency and there was a lot of volume uh, you know, for me over a, a huge span of time. So this is like you know at least over a decade of just like sports in general where i'm just like constantly sprinting i'm driving things and i'm always on the balls of my feet that was like definitely something stressed a lot uh from coaches when i was in technique of different positions where i never like really had my heels down flat and so this to to also like go back to like the deadlift thing was so difficult of a transition for me like being like super grounded and like grounding in my uh you know my heels because that was just mm -hmm. like foreign to me